Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome, welcome to the live broadcast. We're going to bring in our guest of honor, T Major, in just a few minutes here. But uh, first, I want to welcome you all to the room uh, and address the elephant in the room, which is these wonderful uh, glasses that have been provided to me by my friends at Blue Blocks because it is after sundown here for me. And that means, as you know, no blue light. But I wanted you all to be able to see me. So here we have it, the very fashionable orange glasses. Now, if you can hear me and you can see me, please go ahead and give a like or a heart or something in the comments uh, just to let us know that you can hear and see. And I hope the video isn't lagging too much. Literally the entirety of human civilization is on the internet right now trying to broadcast <laughs> and share. So hopefully the video isn't too laggy. Uh, and if it is, we will post a replay. I see the likes already coming in. So I think we might be ready to get started. Are you guys ready for our guest of honor today, Mr. T Major? Wow, a lot of likes coming in. All right, well, here we cool. go. T Major, welcome, my friend. How are you doing? How What's are up, you buddy? Up? I'm a social distancing champ right now. I didn't see another human soul beside my family. Everything's great, man. Fantastic, fantastic. So really excited about today's conversation. Uh, for those of you who don't know T, he's a badass, first off, first and foremost. But oh, more, importantly, <laughs> more importantly, T is literally the absolute best person that we could be talking to today for a couple different reasons. So the topic of the conversation for anyone who's just wandering in off of the interwebs, we're going to be talking about how you can maintain peak physical performance, not just maintain, but actually thrive and exceed and reach your goals. Even if you're stuck in quarantine, even if you don't have any equipment, even if like me, there are literally no kettlebells available in the country. I have tried. They're all sold out. Uh -oh. Uh, I want to talk really, really quickly about why T Major is the man to talk to about this. So again, for those who don't know T, he's a social media sen sen sensation, internet personality, but more important than, than that, he is a personal trainer with decades of personal experience. He's trained A-list celebrities. He's trained every single branch of the US military. And all that alone would not be enough to make him the person to talk to about working out from home. But actually, T is one of the few people who have developed training programs for every branch of the US military in war zones, in combat zones, in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in conditions that are way, way, way worse than most of us, thank goodness, are dealing with right now. And so I wanted to talk to T. We, we did a podcast earlier this week and T shared something that I thought was really interesting. He said, you know, the best case scenario, a lot of people are just trying to maintain. The worst case scenario, they're sitting on the couch eating Cheetos. The best case scenario, a lot of people are trying to maintain. And he's like, Jonathan, I, I wrote this book like three years ago, man. You don't have to maintain. I've seen warriors, elite warriors going into the nastiest places on the planet reach peak mm. physical fitness mm. with nothing not even what you have at home at home you might have more equipment than these people so uh that's a long-winded introduction to say welcome mr t major and and i'm really really excited about everything we're going to be talking about today anything you wanted to add to that thanks a lot man oh uh, no that's a pretty accurate assessment you know like um Thank you for all the kind words and all the bragging. I really appreciate it. But um, I guess the, the important point is is that um, <clears throat> there's a lot of people that are discouraged with their current state uh, of, sort of, of of living right now. And um, I know it's difficult. I'm not trying to take that away from anybody. I'm also living with two small children in the house and having to maintain the same work schedule and also – all the other loads of stress and anxiety that are dumped on top of that. But I'm here to give hope. Hopefully, you know, I'm here to, along with you to just have a basic conversation yep. about how much potential there actually is to still have a great workout routine, a yep. great grasp of your nutrition, a great grasp on your overall health and wellness while you're stuck inside. Yes. And I've learned so much from T which honestly is saying a lot because I've been a student of fitness and the body and physiology and kinesiology and strength training 
since I was 12 years old. And yet I've learned so much from this guy hanging out with you, doing podcast interviews with you, just calling you up. Honestly, you're the first person I call when something doesn't feel right in my body. And you've coached me off a couple really tough situations where I'm like, dude, I can't move this muscle. So I'm really excited to once again, unleash your knowledge. I want to do some quick housekeeping and let everyone know there are going to be three of these broadcasts. So tune in live. Even if you can't tune in live, even if, even if you're watching this as a replay, leave us your comments because T and I are here to serve. That's T's deal. That's my deal. Ask us questions, right? They're I, I would normally say like there's a waiting list to have T as a trainer. Right now, the waiting list is, is not as long because of quarantining, but uh, it's a very special opportunity to get to ask T these questions. So the first thing we did is we actually surveyed our audience. We sent an email out to 70,000 people and we asked them like, what are you working on? First off, 74.4% of people in a multiple choice said they want to feel healthy and happy. So give us a, a like if that is your goal. 53% said they want to improve their physique. Give us a heart if that is your goal. And then it went down from there. Prolong life, increase cardiovascular health. Actually, lose weight was the lowest one out of all of them at only 36.8% of people, which I think just reflects the fact that our, our audience, they're not newbies. They know what they're doing. They know what they're, yeah. they're talking about. Uh, these are not your average Joes. And yet, here's, here's the part that really pained T and I. When we pulled up the survey data, over the last two weeks, you would, I mean, you could look at this two ways, right? Uh, people have more time. They don't have to commute to the gym. I personally mm. have been working out more than I normally do because the, the gym now is five feet from my bed, right? People gave themselves an average of 5.3 for the out last of. two weeks out of 10. Yeah. Ugh. So So troublesome. Some people say I'm a newbie. They send hearts uh, and thank yous. Uh, from wow, from all over the world. I'm going to try and keep up with all these comments. So we asked people, what is stopping that from being a 10? Again, keeping in mind, we were aware of the situation. We know, you know, a lot of people's gyms are closed. I would hope pretty much everyone's. And we actually read through and analyzed all these, mm -hmm. read a ton of them. Again, thousand plus responses. And we tailored the next three days worth of presentations toward exactly this. In fact, I didn't know how to best summarize all of this for you, but this is what people had to say. Okay. The biggest thing that's, that comes up for people is lack, <laughs> lack of X, laziness, motivation, not enough exercise, food problems, gym problems, work, workout problems. We're going to be covering all that over the next three days in these broadcasts. Uh, and so you don't want to miss these. If you're not able to attend live, make sure that you attend uh, and, and watch the replay, ask those questions and gear up. So today I want to, I want to jump off with this idea of we all have to become our own health advocates in this situation. T talk a little bit more about that. I mean, I think a lot of people are, are used to the, maybe the social pressure of going to the gym. Maybe they aren't, maybe, maybe this is the kick in the butt they need. And they're actually always a 5.3, but Right now, we have to become our own health advocates because we don't have the coach, we don't have the trainer, we don't have the CrossFit group. Talk a little bit more about that and, and we'll go from there to motivation. Oh, I lost your audio. Hmm, is it me or is it you? How strange. All right, bear with us, folks. I'll read a comment in the meantime. Nani Avila says, I want to have the discipline to keep with a workout routine. Too much procrastination. That is a very, very common thing that came up. Procrastination came up a lot uh, here. And just discipline came up a lot as well. Beverly from Toronto says, really appreciate you taking the time to connect with us about health advocacy and exercise motivation. Definitely, Beverly. Yeah, this is our shtick. Uh, still don't hear you, T? Well, I will keep entertaining the crowd. I'm not sure. Um, can any, if anyone else can hear T, let me know. Uh, but I think maybe you're muted. How strange. We did a full tech check and then, you know, it, it's always inevitable. T, I'll, I'll keep uh, doing crowd control here. And uh, when you get your audio back, go ahead and talk 
to me. So, uh, yeah, Eric says he can't hear you. So, T and I did a lot of prep for this, and so I will go ahead and uh, and talk about what we talked about, which is at times like this, we all need to be our own health advocates. Sometimes we can rely on other people. Uh, other times, maybe some of us. There we go. T's back. Didn't miss a beat. That? Much better. All right, let's go ahead and bring okay. you back in. All right, and ladies and gentlemen, Mr. T Major. All right, cool. Uh, Sorry there we go. All right, no worries. We have to be our own health advocate. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, what does that What does that kind of mean to you? Because you've dealt with a lot of people at the highest echelons of fitness and at the lowest echelons of fitness. Mm. How how has the game changed now that we're all stuck at home for God knows how long? I think a lot of people are starting to get woken up, right? A lot of people are starting to realize that maybe they place the most important aspect of your life, your own health, into the hands of somebody else. And um, that's great to a certain degree, right? I've been a personal trainer myself, and I am entrusted with a lot of people's health and fitness, which is a great position to be in. But what happens if you weren't paying attention? What happens if you didn't learn anything, right? There's a difference between being on autopilot and being told what to do and also being coached and being and, and being in a position of, of absorbing information. There's two different positions to be in. So there's a lot of people I feel home right now that are in the position where they go, oh, what was that move again? Or what, what did he say about carbs? Uh, have them? Don't have them? Like, so – it's just an interesting time because now the responsibility is on you, right? I mean, you can, of course, check in with people sending text messages. It's not the same as being in front of a live person uh, getting coached up. So um, it's just a time right now where a lot of people have the opportunity to refocus on their health in a way that's actually going to have some real long-term implication. Yes, and, that's and opportunity is the key. It's the word because – you can look at this two different ways, and the way I've chosen to look at it, the way I've been telling my audience for weeks to look at this, this is an opportunity. You always mm. say you don't have enough time to read. You just got enough time. You always say you don't have enough time to spend with your kids. You just got enough time. You always say you're so stressed at work. Well, take take some time away. You know, mm. This is a huge opportunity, and it, it is an opportunity to either rewrite very bad habits – meaning you're going to get into the junk food habit because now you're working from home in the closet, you know, the pantry is right there, or you're going to get into very good habits that are going to take you and you are going to use this time to establish habits that are going to carry forward. So if mm. and when you do go back to the gym, I mean, we're going to be talking about how people can eliminate the need for a gym permanently if, mm. if you know, they, want, they don't want to be an Olympic weightlifter, but if and when you're going to be able to pour gas on that fire. That's right. I find it really interesting. It's going to be really interesting to see the the actual ramifications of this after, right? When everything opens back up again, yes. who continues that gym membership now after this? Because they've been forced to be to be a home workout guru, just like me, just like everybody else. So it's right. really interesting. To see. So we we talked a little bit about how it's now on each and every one of us to be our own nutritionist, or our own new personal trainer, our own CrossFit coach, our own whatever. You mentioned something very interesting. I think people see you. They see these pictures of you online. They see you like huge jacked guy. They don't realize like most of your workouts are at home. You have a gym membership for if you need to go record a video or something. But as I know you with your physical fitness, because you're a, a busy dad, you're with your kids all the time. Most of your workouts are at home. And most yeah. of the workouts with the most elite warriors Navy SEALs that you've done are body weight workouts. So spell yeah. this, dispel this whole myth for me that I need a gym, I need weights, I need equipment in order to really get peak physical fitness. The, yeah, I like how you position that because um, it's important to distinguish about like I started out weight training just like you. You know, I, 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 I'm, I have a background in an Olympic lifting. I have a lot of experience in that. And I put on a good amount of muscle that way. But that's different from being in peak physical fitness. I wouldn't right. have considered myself being in peak physical fitness. I may have looked good. I was able to perform for the particular sports that I was playing. But I never felt better. I never felt healthier, more mobile, stronger, 
more flexible than I did when I started and picked up body weight training and calisthenics. And so <clears throat> I had a strong base, but calisthenics opened up movement and movement patterns to me like nothing else ever did. And because of the type of person that I was training and because of the specificity that they needed for particular missions or for um, their particular job functions, it caused me to really get uh, a hard look at um, how I was programming these workouts out. So, for example, a lot of them had very limited time to work out, maybe an hour a day, where they had to take time away from their normal job functions and responsibilities that they had for the military. So, <clears throat> same um, they had the same amount of stress in the same situation as a lot of us do, right? Lack of time, lack of resources, sometimes lack of energy, whatever it could be. So in order to program that, uh, I had to really dive into my, my bag of tricks. I had mm-hmm. to use every bullet in my gun, for you know, so to speak. Um, <clears throat> and that's where body weight training really came in handy because it's something that everybody has as their tool, your, your body. And body weight training, when you pick it up, there's a there's this crazy science that your body naturally adapts to, to to whatever you give it, you know. So whether you're overweight or or skinny, um, it doesn't matter. Body weight training is still going to be challenging when you first pick it up. So <clears throat> and it's adjustable and scalable, you know, just based on using different measures of resistance uh, and and leverage. So it's um it's it was the perfect opportunity to really dive into it and to use. Uh, body weight training as the primary right. method. Right. And this, of course, isn't an indictment of weight training. I think you and I, I, I definitely, That's I miss right. the squat rack. You know, I actually, we're going to talk about yeah. in broadcasts uh, two or three, we're going to talk about simple equipment you can buy for like under 30 bucks on Amazon. Like I've mm. been doing weighted squats at home and I'm going to teach everyone how, uh, or you're going to teach everyone how. But, uh, but Love this it. isn't an indictment of weight training. It's just to say, it's not a sacrifice not to do weight training. And in fact, it, from a fitness perspective, metabolically, cardiovascular, and even strength wise, you can get a hell of a workout at home. That's exactly right. Yeah. Like, I mean, of course, weight training has its place and it's really great. So this is not a better than scenario. Yeah. This is just, you know, a lot of people are probably wondering can I accomplish what I want to accomplish? Or, or even more, just using my own body weight. And absolutely, you can right. do strength, cardio, and core work just yep. using your own body weight or household yep. items. Yep. And I also want to add, and then I really want us to go into the motivation. I took us off track. Uh, this is a skill that is going to be so powerful for you when at the end of these three trainings, you are able to just, one, have the habits because we're going to talk Mm -hmm. in a few minutes here about habits and establishing those habits and developing those habits. But two, you can go, okay, I've got, I got seven minutes till my next meeting or whatever, you know, my next zoom call, or you land, you get off the plane, you go, I'm jet lagged. I know that working out is going to make me feel better, sleep better, recover better. Yeah. I got 30 minutes, then I'm going to pop in the chart. And when you have that tool in your toolkit to be able to go, all right, I need to do one unit of this, one unit of this, one unit of this. I need this much load, and you can just, you can turn on your T major uh, mm-hmm. sense, you know, your your T sense, and just do it for yourself. You're no longer dependent on anything. You don't even need an internet connection to watch YouTube videos. It's like you're in the airport waiting. You can pop out a workout. Yeah. I, I don't recommend it because you'll probably smell. But uh, so that that's a really really powerful tool. Um, it really is. Let's talk about motivation. I think, you know, people look at someone like you, your whole life in, in athletics, collegiate athlete, they see the pictures, they go, this guy has no problem with motivation. And yet so much of what you teach and so much of what you've taught me is about that motivation, that discipline, you call it the warrior mindset muscle. Mm -hmm. Um, How feeding your inner Schweinehund, they say in Germany, your inner pig dog. Yeah, you know, so it's 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 just like anything else, you know. You're not some people are born with it, but you know, I think even those people that are born with it, they don't fully understand what it actually is, and it's just it's a muscle. It's something that you end up training. This little spark of desire, this little this this little nudge that you have, which everyone has. Some people have found out how to take that, hone it, and turn it into a flame, and some people have ignored it, right? And what happens is because you don't work that muscle, just like any other muscle. It shrinks. 
it becomes dormant, it becomes unused, it becomes fatigued or, or not used at all. And so when, whenever you want to uh, work your inner Schweinehund or defeat your inner Schweinehund, which is this lazy pig dog that's inside of you, yeah. you have to constantly work it. You have to feed the good dog, yes. right? So it's giving it little bite-sized pieces of meat, of healthy grass-fed beef, so right. that it keeps coming back for more over right. and over and over again. So in real in World War terms, what that means for us is it's just starting small and yes. just getting just training yourself to get your ass off the couch. Just having that discipline to say, you know what, at seven o'clock in the morning or seven o'clock in the evening, like my workout is going to be after this call we have. Yep. Um, it's it's saying this is when I'm going to do it and I'm going to do it, and it's just taking yes. that first step forward, man. Which is it so is. hard. It's even hard for me, man. And I've had to train this for a long time. And I also still have situations where I'm like, man, after I get off this call, it would be really easy to have some chocolate or some ice cream and then sit down and start watching the new season of Ozark that just popped up on Netflix. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> but, yeah. but I've trained this muscle, man. And this warrior inside of me, as soon as I start taking that step towards the kitchen, is going to go, are you out of your effing mind? Right. You still have a workout to do, right? So go get your go get your Under Armour pants on and let's let's work this shit out. So here's what I, I love about when you and I collab because you've got the real world, the physical, the the experience of like you've worked with so many people. When you privately like off the record told me some of the people that you've trained, I was like, no. Nah. And then you showed me pictures. I was like, what the hell? So you you have that real world experience of transforming people's lives. Uh, I have the neuroscience perspective, right? So I am a mm. student of, of neuroscience and the, and I'm sure you do as well. I yeah, study yeah, the like brain. I have, t- have 10 books in my place right now that I have to read because of you. Uh, yeah, I, that tends to happen to people that I like. <laughs> read this, read this. So I've read every book you can throw at me on willpower, habits, uh, you know, behavior change. Like I've read them all. A lot of the authors have become dear friends of mine, Nir Eyal, Benjamin Hardy. And so I'm a real student of this. And what I've come to Mm -hmm. learn is the way that most of us go about it is all wrong. And you've been preaching this all along. This is why you're, you're one of the brands that you have is called Kaizen, right? Because it Mm -hmm. it really is like, if a workout to you right now means I'm going to need to put on my workout clothes, I'm going to need to sweat for 45 minutes. I'm going to need to suffer. What association is that creating in your mind? Working out is hard. It's unpleasant. I don't like it. And so therefore, not only do you have to get over the working out as hard, the physical actual, but you have to get over the the mindset. And what I've learned from whether it's Ben Hardy, Nir Eyal, James Clear, like all these thought leaders that I get to interact with as part of this weird thing I call a job, you got to make it easy, right? Mm. And, And don't fall prey to this what the hell effect where you go, what the hell, you know, five pushups is not worth anything because the magic of this is in what's called signaling. Benjamin Hardy taught me about this. I was just talking to him two days ago. Uh, he wrote a new book going deeper into this concept called Personality Isn't Permanent Podcast. Won't be out for a long time, uh, but I'll tell you a little bit about what it is, which is basically you can change your personality and you can change your perspective of who you think you are. We all think that our perception of self, our identity, is formed based on years and years and years of knowing ourselves. It's actually about two to three weeks. It's like Mm -hmm. two to three weeks. And and I saw this, Ben was doing a challenge for some of my mastermind members and I committed, it was the willpower elimination challenge. And I committed, I was like, all my life, I have had this identity that I'm a night workout person and that I hate working out in the morning. And Ben challenged me and he was like, give me three weeks, three weeks, tough it out. Just go to the gym. If you don't feel like working out, go home. Never happened first off. But sometimes I would do open gym. I do like three sets of squats, exercise bike, go home. He said, give me three weeks. On the 22nd day, I walk out of the gym. I look up. Sun's still coming up. It was winter. Sun's still coming up. It's 830 in the morning. And I was like, oh, man, like I can go home, have a shower, and I still have an hour before my next call. I'm so glad I'm a morning workout person. And I was like, like what? Who? Yeah. And that's all it took. Yeah. It, was, it was little tiny steps. And, uh, and, and James Clear articulates this beautifully in Atomic Habits small decisions. I mean, uh, what does he say? Every decision you make is a vote for the kind of person you want to be. And after enough votes, you become that person. So 
when people are saying motivation is the issue, which a lot of people said, like 40% of people said motivation and laziness, cool, be lazy, man. Just get off the couch every day at 730 and do one push up or one squat. And that's it. And if that's all you want to do, that's all you got to do. That's the secret, and then, man. And then build that habit. That's the secret. And a lot of people don't realize that. Like I, I say sometimes, you know, hey, motivation is a myth. There's no such thing as motivation as discipline. And so habit. once you pr- yeah. and have which, ha- which is discipline. That's it, man. So you change the habits, you change discipline, and all of a sudden you start seeing like, hey, I'm I'm actually really motivated to do this. But it's yes. and re- the reality of it is is that you've changed the you've changed the makeup of the way that you see things, right? Yes. And perspective is like you touched on this, but perspective is really important. So you have to stop th- seeing it as contributing to your health. Instead, yes, you have to see it as contributing to your health instead of taking away from the things that you enjoy. Yes. And even just that shift in, in your mindset can really make a huge difference. You this know, is massive. This is massive. So this, the, same, because, the same example, right? Mm-hmm. Like walk, oh, you know what? I really want to walk to the kitchen and get some chocolate and watch Ozark. Instead of thinking that way, it becomes, I can't wait to be all done with this call because I get to do my workout finally. Right. And I get to give back to myself. I have some time for myself. I get to fill my own cup, these things. I get to take one step forward towards my strength goals, towards my cardio. Right. It's it's all about what are you giving yourself as opposed to taking away. Yes. And by the way, if if this is valuable and you guys are getting value out of this, give us a thumbs up. And if it's not valuable, let us know in the comments and we'll move on to something else. But given how much people want to know about motivation, how much they struggle with it. I think it's worth harping on this a little bit. To your point, I uh, I got the chance to learn from Andy Ramage and some of the folks over at One Year No Beer. They're experts in breaking a really hmm. hard behavior, which they, they don't specifically work with alcoholics. But they work with people who have very unhealthy habits around drugs and alcohol, hard habits to break. And they call this eating the marshmallows. So one of the problems that they've identified is that when someone makes a behavior change, it takes months, weeks, years until they reap the benefits. Like if I start learning Mm. Spanish instead of watching Netflix, in my mind, it's like at least six months before I enjoy the benefit, which is, you know, getting to go to Mexico and and hit on the local attractive people. But if you start eating the marshmallows right away, this is taken from, um, from the Stanford marshmallow experiment, convincing your brain that you're already getting benefits. So instead of going, well, I, here's, the, here's the big problem, right? We all work out on January 1st and we go, I don't see any difference. And then we work out and work out and work out. And then January 12th, we go, I don't see any difference. And so we give up if that's your marshmallow. But if your marshmallow is, hey, wait a minute, I worked out today. My back isn't hurting as much as it normally did in just one day. Or, hey, wait a minute, today I ate healthier and I had more energy so I could play with my kids. It's like if you start eating those marshmallows right away, Motivation is no longer the issue because you're getting rewarded, at least you're convincing yourself, you're getting rewarded in the same way that you would when you watch Netflix, where you're like, ah, yeah, I get to relax and watch Netflix. So it's mm-hmm. it's exactly what you said. It's tricking yourself, really. Like it's it's doing a, a, a mental job on yourself to go like, Jedi look mind at all trick. The, yeah, look at all the benefits that I got. I worked out today, this morning, uh, instead, of, instead of doing what I wanted to do, which was obsessively check the news. And then... I'm eating those marshmallows. It's like Mm -hmm. I've been standing at my standing desk for hours and my back doesn't hurt because I did deadlifts today and I stretched a ton before I did that and I got my spinal erectors all ready. Uh, And and here's another marshmallow. I don't have to work out tomorrow. I'm going to take a day off and it's going to be great, (laughs) you know? So, uh, So that's a bit on motivation. Like to summarize, one... Make it small, make it easy. Like a lot of what we're going to be teaching are not going to be one hour workouts. Like they're going to be five, 10, 15 minute workouts. Sometimes you're just going to do a couple different movements, exercises. It might be that one day your entire routine is mobility, stretching, right? Maintenance, taking care of your body, but it's getting into that tiny habit and reinforcing it so that it creeps up on you. And eventually you have an, an epiphany like I did where you're like, I'm so glad I'm a morning person, or I'm so glad I work out every single day or you know, I'm so I, glad I work on mobility every day. Exactly. Yeah. I'm, I'm so glad I don't eat sugar anymore. And then you're like, wait, who is this person? And that's mm. one more thing I want to cover again on the Ben Hardy thing. Uh, you know, I've, I've been very deeply influenced by Ben and his work. 
you got to make it easy for yourself because willpower does not exist. So if you're bringing all that crap in the house on the, on the nutrition scale, I understand some of you have kids, but if you don't want yourself eating it, your kids probably shouldn't be eating it either, right? Your kids probably shouldn't be eating the cookies and stuff like that. Don't bring Pretty it in the point. house because the minute it crosses the door, you've lost the battle. And this is true whether or not you're in quarantine. The minute it crosses the door, it's there. And and I have case safes and all these like time adjustable safes and stuff like that that I use for locking up the cell phone and the TV remote. And yet when I lock up bad foods, my mom has this habit of sending me coffee, uh, coffee beans, chocolate covered coffee beans. She sends them in the mail whenever I'm like, hey, can you send me a, I can't get a copy of this book here. Send me a, it always comes with chocolate. And I put it in the case safe because I go, I don't, I don't want to be tempted by this. But eventually the case safe opens, whether it's a week or a month and I've lost the battle. Like I'll have a handful of them. You know, so that's right. So when it's it comes to nutrition, out of it's, mind, man. It, yeah, exactly. And and just make it easier to comply. Like instead of buying the, I know this is like so extreme for people, but it's like why try to make that willpower decision when the food is right in front of you? Because everything about your being, the reptilian brain, is not wired for willpower. It's wired for survival. You will lose unless you are like that rare 0.1% of people who actually can do this, like you will lose because of 7 million years of, of evolution versus food that is engineered to be addictive and irresistible. You will yeah, lose. So don't put yourself your in that. Up, man. Exactly. Don't put yourself in that position. Every time you think, I mean, we're all delivering our groceries right now. We're going to the grocery mm -hmm. store. When you think about clicking the Oreos, it's a lot easier to resist the picture of the Oreos than it is the actual Oreos. And instead go, you know what? If I have to have a treat, it's going to be some 85% no sugar added chocolate or whatever. <laughs> You know. you know what I run into a lot, you know, and I'm sure a lot of people are thinking this right now. They're like, oh, come on. And like, it's still possible. Like, what do you have to restrict so much? And like, that's the worst life ever when you can't even have a piece of chocolate. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. But here's the real deal. If you have a goal to reach, there has to be sacrifice, right? If you're trying to get somewhere different, then you have to change the same right. shit that you've been doing, right? So this is what I have to tell people all the time. But like, it's not permanent. You don't right. have to quit chocolate forever, right? But you have a goal that you're trying to reach, so things have to change, right? You have to sacrifice. And, that's just yeah. That's just nuts and bolts of it. And with any luck, if if you change the underlying environment, it can become permanent. Because when when you become the kind of person, and this is this is driving me crazy right now because of some some conditions that are in my household that I can't really talk about that uh, that. Uh, necessitate change in diet doesn't matter it, it's irrelevant the point is like <laughs> i can only imagine what's going on don't it, get yourself in trouble yeah uh, it's, it's a whole deal <laughs> it's, it's a whole thing so anyway uh you know once once the ideal situation is you become that, that kind of person who just never buys that stuff it just doesn't mm -hmm. happen and then mm -hmm. maybe worst case you go out to dinner and then well that won't happen anytime soon but you go out to dinner and and then it's like, oh, a little treat. But ideally, you want to get into the situation where you've now changed your identity, and you're you just yeah. you're just not a person who eats chips, you know. That's right. Or has the extra drink, or the entire bottle of wine, or exactly. whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, I wanna I wanna give people an idea of of what we are going to be learning. We talked mostly in in this challenge or this broadcast about the willpower component. Honestly, we weren't planning on doing that. And then we saw the survey data and we said, we need to, yeah. we need to really go into that. We need to really talk about all these different things, like making it easy, making it small, starting small, repetitively enforcing that habit. Tomorrow, we are going to go a lot deeper, or sorry, Wednesday, let me clarify, Wednesday, we're going to go a lot deeper into the actual exercise component. And on Friday, we're going to go into the actual nutrition component. Because these are the things, if you look, these are the things that come up. I got a second screen here. Time and time and time and time and time again in the survey data. Um, oh, no. Stream quality updated. So we're going to go a lot deeper in. We do have, and, and we want people to engage. We want people to actually do this stuff. That's why there's a day between the workouts. So we want you to try it come back. I'm going to post the next broadcast 
tonight or tomorrow, you can comment on there. We will already see all the comments uh, when we go live in the next broadcast and we will handle them. Now, there is mm. a, a series of free gifts that we want to give people to make this easy. And the free gift that we've created today for people is really a, a preparation for the next uh, challenge, which is a lot of people don't even know the movements we're going to be talking about. We're going to be telling people sure. how can you create a workout for yourself without needing YouTube with that, because I've already gone through all of Pamela Reif's workouts. Trust me. Like it, it's been a long uh, few weeks of quarantine. You want to create your own workout based on what you want to do in your goals and the parts of your body that you want to work on. So we're going to be talking about that. That's why we created this uh, resource for folks that they can download right here. It's go.superhumanacademy.com slash workout. And I will share that in the chat as well. Uh, go.superhumanacademy.com slash workout. What this is going to do, because I realized uh, in the process of, of getting to know you, a lot of people don't even know what movements do what. So when we tell them you can't, you don't want to do two exercises that work your quadriceps at the same time, and they go, well, which exercises work my quadriceps? So T and I put together a whole guide that you can download completely free, uh, which is going to show you literally every movement and what it works. So that when we say, you know, if you're working your quadriceps, don't also work your hamstrings the same day because then you're going to be a penguin or whatever it is that we're teaching. You can go, okay, that means that I shouldn't mix squats and deadlifts in one day because that's going to be a huge load on my, you know, on my kind of posterior complex whole deal. T's the expert in this. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, so go ahead and download that. It's right here on the screen. Go there, download it. You'll get all three of the free resources at once. Uh, we have one free resource for every single day for people who stick around. Go ahead, download it. Uh, and we're going to go deep, 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 deep on Wednesday. So again, leave comments on the video, leave questions. Uh, if there are any questions right now, we'll be more than happy to uh, take them. And T, anything you want to add? We also, by the way, have a podcast episode coming out tomorrow where we're going to cover a lot of this stuff as well. Yeah, cool. I think that this is a, this is a lot of information to digest between the podcast that we had and, and this today. Yes. Um, so yeah, if anybody has any questions uh, specifically for me, I'm also uh, open to answer any questions either through the chat here that we have set up or um, you can message me directly through any of my social handles. Jonathan, yes. if you don't mind, you can share those at some point. Absolutely. Um, yeah, Absolutely. I'm, a, I'm an open book. I really appreciate it. And and for someone with, with your credentials to be as generous uh, with your time is not an obvious thing. It's not a, even a common thing. So I, I really appreciate it. Again, you've committed, you've got two kids under the age of, of two and a half, two kids under the age of two, you used to say, but it's been a, about six months, uh, you know, at home. And so this is not at all, uh, this is not easy for you. And I, I really appreciate it. I was up at five, so it's also not easy for me, but uh, I super yeah. appreciate you doing this for our audience. Um, Beverly asks, what's the podcast called? It is the Superhuman Academy podcast, and you can find it in this great short link. That episode is going to come out tomorrow. Uh, we will be covering more in these trainings than we cover there because these are three one-hour trainings, and that is a one one-hour podcast. But again, it's going to be valuable uh, for folks. Download the worksheets. Ask questions in the next broadcast. And uh, T, once again, thank you, my friend. I'm, uh, I'm blessed to know you, and I appreciate you. No, nah, man. No, nah, same. Likewise, my brother. I appreciate you too. And uh, hopefully we can help a lot of people. You know, it, yes. don't forget to tell the, everybody that's watching the broadcast now, share. You know, we're here to help people. Yes. We're here to, we're just here to serve. And uh, a lot of people are in the same exact scenario right now. They're yes. searching for answers. They're needing some help. They're needing a bit of hope right now. So share this with somebody that you think could benefit from. Uh, we're here to help. Yes, and give us feedback. Again, we're we're here to serve. We're gonna take all the comments, all the questions that you post either here or on the next one, and that's gonna be the starting point for next broadcast on Wednesday. Again, we're here to serve. All you have to do is ask. Uh, and so, T, I will leave you there to get your workout done. Thank you, my friend. Yes, thanks, dude. See you.